T.I. is just, I was just telling you before we started running, but he, that situation got me so angry because T.I. was the only person that I knew prior to stepping onto that stage. Kanye had introduced us um, maybe the year prior. We had spoken on the phone for a, a lot of, uh, like, hours on the phone about what our opinions are politically. It felt like he was trying to dunk on you a lot. It was crazy because when I spoke to him on the phone, he was like, I agree with you on this. I agree with you on this. And agreed on everything we talked about. Every no debate. Sing- no debate. The only no thing, pushback. The only thing he says is like, you know, I just, I just can't get behind Trump, right? That was yeah, the yeah, only yeah, okay. thing he ever said on the phone. I can't get behind Trump. Every other topic we talked about Black America, he agreed with, he agreed with. He was so kind. We got on stage and he turned into like a performer. Like he literally put on a performer. So I say now T.I. is a fraud. He's a very little man physically like and mentally he's a small man because to do that for what? There was nothing but in that room. I was not jumping on stage being like vote for Trump. Right. I was not up there like you got to be with Trump or against Trump. We were having a very real honest discussion that black America deserved to have on that stage. Right. That they deserve to listen to and develop opinions. And he halted it by, you know, acting like a goon. The- do you feel like you guys were like, I don't know, friends might be a stretch, but like if you guys were talking before, because I felt like he just met you that day. Yeah. And also, I really felt like he just completely hated everything you said. Yeah. And he's a liar. He's a fraud and a liar. So, you know, whenever I see headlines now about him and all the personal stuff he has going on, I'm like, I don't doubt anything because anybody that can move like that, because to me, I don't care what your position is. If you are left and you believe what you say, I respect you for believing it, even if I disagree. He gets out there and says what he doesn't believe. Hi, you guys. I just wanted to come on to touch on an interview between DJ Academics and Candace Owens. So Candace sat down with Academics, I guess, two or three days ago. And she, of course, she talks politics. And T.I. came up in the Revolt Summit. Maybe they were talking about if she's going to do it again or not. You know, I don't even know if... Well, they probably won't have another one until it's an election. Um, And so, anyway, she started talking about her experience at the Revolt Summit. um, And she stated that T.I. turned on her, I guess, uh, in a way, per se, um, that he was talking to her on the telephone, calling her, so on and so forth, before they went to the summit. And she said he, I think she said Killer Mike introduced them. And so they were in, in talks. And when she, he got to the summit and they got to the panel discussion, he kind of flipped out on her like he didn't really know her. I'm going to try to add a, a couple, well, one minute, at least a minute of their exchange um, because I do remember, it's funny because I remember that. I remember watching that summit that year. And, um, well, I think I watched it here on YouTube. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't have remote TV, but I probably watched the video here on YouTube. Um, and I think a lot of people were cheering TI on because they felt like, um, she was trying to, kind of push Trump and he had said some things or whatever had happened uh, around that time. Because, you know, it was a lot of stuff going on during that election year. But anyway, um, I do remember that, though. I remember that moment. And I think a lot of people thought, you know, they were kind of patting T.I. on the back like he was really standing up for something. And what she's saying is that he really... um, was didn't feel the way that he was acting out because he was calling her up, holding conversations with her, talking with her, I guess, whenever they ran into each other or whatever. So she just felt like he wasn't, you know, acting in a genuine way, the way he was acting as if he didn't really know her during that summit. Like she just came out of nowhere, you know, um, stumping for Trump, right? And so... I don't know. I believe her. I can believe her. Um, I think T.I. has showed his hand a, a few times. Now, some some of the things that go on in Atlanta, maybe nationally is not known. <laughs> I don't know. And I don't really want to get it too deep off into anything in this video. But he definitely has done some things that um, 
kind of make me not feel that he's as genuine as about this whole community activist work or whatever y'all want to call it, whatever they calling it out here. Um, I think some of these people, they see that there's some type of benefit in putting themselves out here like that. They only put themselves, you know, they're not full-blown out here doing nothing. Now, let's not get that twisted. (laughs) But they will put themselves out here enough, put their voice out here enough to make people feel that they can see them in these ways. Um, But I feel like, without me knowing what it is, because I don't know, but I feel like there's something in it for them. And that's the only reason they're doing as much as they are doing. That's what I believe. Because, yeah, I, I do agree. He definitely has um, said some things, and then his actions were the opposite of his his views, right? Or maybe his views are not really his real views. And so I do agree with her about that. I think maybe he says a lot of things that he thinks people want to hear. And, you know, it's that part. It's a lot of that out here. There's a lot of people out here, um, you know, doing stuff like that. He's not the only one, but it, yeah, he's somebody that I can, I can believe it. I can believe that he was, you know, being nice to her. And then when they got on that panel, he started checking her. Right. (laughs) Right. Um, I'm going to try to put at least a minute of that in here so you guys can kind of hear their exchange. Let me know what you think about what she was saying about him, um, kind of acting one way. When the camera was, wasn't rolling, and then when the camera started rolling, he was turned into a completely different person. You know, I remember that whole sushi situation. Like I said, I don't know if you guys um, are aware of that because that happened. Most of the stuff that I know of happened in Atlanta, and I was actually living in Atlanta at the time. And so it's possible that y'all might not even be aware that those situations happened. And some of it, you can Google it because it's out there. Uh, I don't even I don't know if it actually made national news like that, but it definitely was. Um, it was on the blogs because a lot of these blo- uh, YouTubers, they are you know they live they're based in Atlanta, so some of this stuff they do talk about even here on YouTube, but as far as mainstream media, it wasn't in on you know it probably didn't show up in mainstream media, but. Um, the whole sushi situation, how he inserted himself like he was once again a social, what do you got? I mean, a community activist type. And then the couple came out and was like, What are you talking about? We don't even know you. Like, who? We didn't ask you to speak to anybody on our behalf. And in my whole thing is like, you know, regardless if you have a friend that's friend with this man or not, you saw him call this man an N word. You saw them discriminate against this couple. Um, so you letting us know what side you're on with that. That's how I took it. You know, he never said anything else about it. And he don't have to because the whole situation kind of spoke for itself. But let me know what you guys think about what she's saying. You know, that was just one of the things because he's done a few things that makes me side eye now. <laughs> and I, um, so I kind of agree with her. And I do feel like we can hear everybody out. You know, we're not a monolith. And... um there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to all sit around and just hold an intelligent conversation. And if you feel strongly in one way, you have a right to feel strongly in one way. But you don't have a right to tell me how to feel. You don't have a right to tell somebody else how to feel. So she has a right to her her opinion as well. And we can just, you know, discuss. It shouldn't turn into a thing where you're talking to people in a disrespectful tone. Or you're trying to make it sound as if they're trying to do something other than what they're trying to do right um but yeah let me know what you guys think about what she had to say in the comments and um do you agree or disagree and i will see you guys in the next video bye it's in my eyes it's not about republican it's not about democrat It's about decent people who have a genuine interest to fulfill the need of the people that look like me. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I feel. Like, 
if you know that the educational system is subpar uh, in Atlanta or wherever it is, then okay, and, and I have children. My children go to school. I don't, want this, I don't want the education system to be subpar. So I'm gonna vote on the person who has a strong education initiative, period. It's not about voting for people because I'm black and they're Democrats, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Candace, much to your dismay, that's not how I feel. That's not, my, that's not how I choose a candidate. I choose, for one, people who I feel are decent, two, people who I feel are honest, three, people who I feel are educated and who are experienced and who can actually follow through with doing the shit they stand on TV and say. Uh, but I think that everybody on this panel, if all of you are brilliant, all of us have ideas that could benefit one another, uh, and I think that what Mike said was uh, what Mike said was absolutely correct. If we can get in a room, you know what I'm saying. I think Candace has a problem with the crowds cheering for me and booing to her, and that's not my fault. That's not my intention. I didn't say that. Yes, you did. You said I'm going for. No, I said I don't like when you go for gotcha moments because gotcha moments. Like that when means... you're like, oh, well, you started with some bullshit. Like actually, let me you get did, to what I was gonna though. say because what I was gonna say is what Killer Mike said. All right. Well, okay. So, okay. Okay. So listen, when you're trying I'm to just fight you. people and you actually listen, don't, you're there. Against... We're all losing when you do okay, something listen, like that. Everybody not, no, loses no, when you go for no. a gotcha. I know listen. how to, if you want to hype a crowd. Oh, it's bullshit. It's racism. Candace, it's sister, Trump. Get on your feet. Fuck this. We gotta stand up. Sister. We gotta do our shit. We gotta do what we gotta do. Round of applause people. for Candace. That's please. a waste of time.